Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David, scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. This uh, caught my attention. This is from uh, DailyMail.com. And uh, this is dealing with the science, the archaeology, and it's supposed to be based on an old encampment site where you had the uh, the Syrian army under Sennacherib, the, you know, one of the uh, the old kings of uh, Syria, who was planning to come and invade. Uh, Israel you know they were going to send uh, their armies to come and uh, encircle us and, and take us down and uh, the Lord uh, sent an angel to uh, King Hezekiah who was our king at the time King, king of Judah and uh, the Lord assured him that you know we're we going to be alright and um, the Lord is going to pretty much handle uh, his army and um, apparently, you had this archaeologist that uh, discovered this uh, particular uh, encampment site. And this is supposed to be an aerial view of the actual site, proving that, uh, you know, this indeed wasn't just a, uh, a tale, but this actually happened. All right, showing you that, you know, the scriptures is true. All right, and um, we don't really need any evidence of anything. All right, we, we have faith. All right, we believe everything that is written. All right, Esau, he usually needs tangible evidence before he believes anything. All right, and um, before I even um, go into it, let me just get this uh, precept. This is uh, Yahweh Shai. Uh, this is uh, Luke 8 and 17. And it says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. And uh, the truth that have been without fruit is now being declared. That's what's being manifested, this, this truth. Okay. So, um, yeah, we get into it. It says, proof of Bible story about angels killing 185,000 soldiers in a night is uncovered after 2,700 years. And um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe it was a angel, okay? Um, when uh, when when Hezekiah kind of panicked when he heard about, you know, hear from the messengers that uh, the king of Assyria was coming to uh, invade, uh, the Lord, you know, uh, lifted up his, his third eye. And he saw, you know, those chairs. He saw angels. So it was multiple angels. But if I'm not mistaken, and we're going to visit, we're going to go into it. Um, I believe it was one angel that took out all those soldiers. All right. So um, I'm going to read some of this uh, article in uh, Lord Willen. Um, I'll have the link in the description if brothers want to, you know, read through it themselves. Um, it says, researchers have discovered an ancient military base that may corroborate a Bible story about the Most High's angels fending off an attack on Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, this is another story, you know, to uh, that you can read for comfort and to uh, build your faith, you know, just to know that the Lord, um, you know, he's, he, 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 he's, scriptures say, um, let me go to it in the Apocrypha. Let's go to Sirach 2. Because this was one of many troubles that Israel went through that the Lord delivered us from. You know, he always uh, showed his His might and his power on our behalf. You know, when whenever our enemies came at us, you know, the Lord would, um, if he was with us and we were in good standing with him, he would uh, intervene, step in on our behalf and, and, and deliver us. And we believe that the Lord is going to do it again. You know, it tells us in Isaiah the 59th chapter that um, basically uh, uh, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, 
He shall lift up his standard against them. So eventually the Lord's going to show his might once again. All right. And uh, we, 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 we usually get amped up because uh, we, we still see the angels. They're, they're still around. You know, every time we look up, you know, you see the chariot, you know, just lurking. I mean, people on the street, they don't even know what we're looking at when we're looking up. You know, they don't even think to look at, to, to see what we're seeing. And it's, it's usually when we at camp, we'll catch, you know, a chariot or a few chariots up there. And uh, nobody's, uh, nobody else is lifting up their head. So we know that that's, apparently that's the Lord, you know, opening up our eyes that, to, to assure us that, you know, the Lord is uh, lurking, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the angels encamp around about those that fear the Lord. All right. So anyway, this is a uh, Sirach 2 and 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right. So this, this, is, this has happened, you know, various times throughout our history. And that's why it says in uh, Romans, whatever was written aforetime was written for our uh, learning. You know, so that we can, um, let me, let me get it. <laughs> yeah, Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is another good, uh, book to read all right going into uh the, the this time frame all right going into our biblical history you know we were delivered in another miraculous way all right with the lord sent angels down to fight on our behalf so it says uh, the angel of the lord is then said to have descended on the invading military and killed 185,000 soldiers in a single night and that's the power that we we have on the right hand esau he got his you know, his military, you know, he got his super soldiers, you know, he, you know, he has his advanced uh, technology to, to, to fight his battles. He has his blessing. So what do we have? You know, what do we put our trust in? The Mosai, Yahabah Shem Yahweh Shai. His, his, a, his the, mo, the, Paul said, the, um, uh, the weakness of the Mosai is stronger than men. So there ain't no way you uh, you winning against that, and we know that there's gonna be a a, a a war in heaven. You know, Michael and his archangels versus the dragon and his angels, and it's not gonna be no match whatsoever. It says, uh, <clears throat> there has not been any archaeological evidence that the supernatural event, or even the battle, actually happened. Now, using modern map mapping techniques, archaeologists. Uh, Stephen Compton claims he has found more evidence that epic battle took place. The Assyrian Empire operated from 1365 BC to 609 BC, hundreds of years before the time of the anointed. The invasion of Jerusalem was driven by the em empire's King Sen Sennacherib, who wanted to assert his political and economic dominance over all routes across the Assyrian desert that led to the mediterranean sea researchers have previously discovered a scene carved into the walls of the king sennacherib's palace which celebrated his conquest of lachish a city 42 miles south of jerusalem the carving showed how the military base was laid out allowing compton to compare it to photos taken of the area in 19 in the 1910s he noticed an area with the same was the same size and shape as the drawings on the palace wall, which led to ruins containing the remains of a perimeter wall in pottery sheds. After conducting an archaeological survey of the site, Compton determined that it was abandoned after Sennacherib's invasion and the, that humans hadn't inhabited the area for at least 2,600 years. The finding has paved the way for researchers to locate other similar military sites in the area and they hope it will lead to uncovering ancient cities that were destroyed by the Assyrian Empire. Okay. 
I'll read just a little more and then uh, we'll go back to the actual uh, story. It says uh, in 2021, Compton wrote in a post on X, then Twitter, that he had discovered the location of Senator Karev's military camps. Each was a round site a little over a mile north of the respective old city walls and each bore the same Arabic name on at least one early map. All right, it says, uh, Madawra, Madawra, he wrote. The location also signified that it was the site where Sennacherib's forces planned their attack because it was called Kerbet al Mudawara in Arabic, meaning the ruins of the camp of the invading ruler. Before Compton discovered the Assyrian site, researchers had only encountered one other ancient military campsite in the area. All right, so, you know, they did, they dig, they did, they search in comparison, you know, and uh, this is what they came up with. And uh, if I'm not, let me see real quick. Let me go back to the to the site on you know, Daily Mail. So you see, you know, this is uh taken of the view of a picture, a photo taken of the view or right, from uh from aerial vision. And um oops. Let me go back. So I can show the others. So let me just yep. <clears throat> and then you can see um the different locations you can see it's in um it looks like it's in uh Hebrew the different names and we know the angel he came down and he smoked their ass man got them all up out of there which is why we shouldn't uh fear And of course, that's a probably Renaissance art painting because we know that uh, the Assyrians wasn't no damn Edomites. They didn't look like Edomites. You know, they were men of color. And we know Jake, you know, were men of color. Another image. So there it is. Okay. And they always find stuff. You know, we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was one of the most notable ones. Where they went to those uh, sites and you know discovered all the ash and you know, the sulfur balls in, in the area. And they know those things, you know, can't grow there, so there's no um, inhabitants. You know, they found a pillar of salt. You know, so things are always being found, which uh, proves the validity of the scriptures. You know, you got a lot of Jake that still try to. Um, find fault you know with the scriptures or you know they they're not sure of, of, of what to believe in the scriptures and you know because a lot of our people don't have faith man and uh we know that faith is a gift you know but uh there's a good uh you know interesting read and like i said i'll put a link to this in the description so uh let's go to the story real quick and um we'll just uh you know read into it and i'm gonna read it in uh the new, the new living translation so we're gonna go to the one in uh kings second kings and 19th chapter and it says uh this is starting at the top it says when king hezekiah heard their report talking about the report that uh the assyrian king sennacherib was sending his armies to come you know get at us he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, uh, Shepna, the court secretary, and the leading priest, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. And that's why when you read Isaiah, the 30, I believe it's the 37th chapter, that's uh, prophet Isaiah's account of the same uh, event. All right, because he was, he was uh, the prophet at the time under Hezekiah, okay? It says, uh, they told him, this is what King Hezekiah says, today is a day of trouble 
insults and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. But perhaps the Lord, your power, has heard the Assyrian chief of staff sent by the king to defy the living power and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, Say to your master, this is what the Lord says, Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, and the king will receive a message that he is indeed, he's like he is needed at home. So he will return to his land where I will have him killed with the sword. But the Most High is like, don't even worry about it. You know, he he gonna receive a message that he's he needs to be where he needs to be because his ass gonna get put to death. And if I'm not mistaken, it was his own sons that ended up putting him to death, and then they fled. So it says, uh, meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria, who had left Lachish and was attacking Libna. Soon after King Sennacherib received word that King uh, Taharka of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God in whom you trust deceive you with promises that Jerusalem will not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well what the kings of Assyria have done wherever they have gone. And this was, you know, before the Lord rose up the Babylonians, the, the, the Assyrian army, that was that was pretty strong. All right. The, the, the Assyrian Empire, you know, they were strong before the Lord rose up the Babylonian Empire. And the Babylonian Empire was really ruled by the same nation. They were Assyrians as well. All right. So they were real proud, you know. They had uh, Tyrese, Iran, they had uh, trafficking, you know, and, they, and they, they definitely ruled. It says they have completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. They should you. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them, such nations as uh, Gozen, Haran, Rezep, and the people of uh, Eden who were in uh, Talasar? My predecessors destroyed them all. So they was proud. You know, they trust in their, 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 their chariots, you know, and, and, and their horsemen. We trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And, and, and the Lord, you know, he's shown various times that you can't mess with the, 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 the army of, of, of the Lord. You can't mess with the, the Lord of Sabaoth. Okay. What happened to the king of Hamath? And the king Arpad, what happened to the kings of Seraphim, Hena, and Iva? After Hezekiah received a letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord, O Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are the Most High God of all the kingdoms of the earth. And the Lord, he rules in the kingdom of men and set up over it whom he will, even the basis of men. And that's what they didn't uh, realize. The Lord set the Assyrians up. All right. And, you know, under their empire, you had the northern kingdoms, the northern tribes that was carried out of um, Samaria and carried away into captivity in, in Assyria. Then prophecy had to fulfill itself because they ended up leaving and they came to uh, this side of the world, here to the Americas. So prophecy had to be... Uh, Fulfilled. It says, You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Yahweh, and listen. Open your eyes, O Yahweh, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living power. It is true, Yahweh, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations. And they have thrown down, it's like, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But, if, hey, but uh, like Psalms, was that Psalms 96? Uh, the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So these, these men are nothing in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Shai, man. He count them as, as nothing and, 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 and less than nothing. 
They're like the uh, the dust of the balance. But of course, the, Assyri the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all. Only idols of wood and stone helped. It's like you're shaped by human hands. Now, O Yahweh, our power, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Yahweh, are the most high power. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer about King Sennacherib of Assyria. And the Lord has spoken his word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. Whom you have been defying and ridiculing. Against whom did you raise your voice? At whom did you look with such haughty eyes? It was the Holy One of Israel. But your messengers have defied the Lord. You have said, with, many, with my many chariots I have conquered the highest mountains. Yes, the, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I have reached its farthest corners and explored its deepest forests. I have dug wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water. With the sole of my foot, I stopped all the rivers of Egypt. But you have not heard? I decided this long ago. Long ago I planned it. And now I am making it happen. I plan for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. That is why their people have so little power and are so frighted, frightened and confused. They're as weak as grass, as easily trampled as tender green shoots. They are like grass sprouting on a housetop, scorched before it can grow lush and tall. But I know you well where you stay and when you come and go. I know the way you have raged against me. And because of your raging against me and your arrogance, which I have heard for myself, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will make you return by the same road on which you came. All right, you, you Basically, I'm going to send you running. You're going to go right back to where you came from. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, here's the proof that I, what I say is true. This year you will eat only what grows up by itself, and next year you will eat what springs up from that. And in the third year, you will plant crops and harvest them, and you will tend vineyards and eat their fruit. And you who are left in Judah, who have escaped the ravages of the siege, will put roots down in your soil and will grow up and flourish. For a remnant of my people will spread from Jerusalem and group of survivors from Mount Zion. The passionate commitment of the Lord of the heaven's armies will make this happen. And this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth against its walls. So they won't even be given a chance to do nothing. All right. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came, and he will not enter the city, says the Lord, for my own honor and for my sake. It's like it, and for the sake of my servant David, I will dis defend this city and protect it. And that's why our Lord is our defense. All right. That's who we we're to trust at all times, man. He's our defense. He's our shield. He's our buckler. It says the night the angel of the Lord went out from the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Just imagine that. You know, you, 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 y'all, 180, you're more than 185,000. Uh, deep you know you just know you got numbers y'all strong you know y'all y'all ready to uh, take over you about to go and try to you know spoil and you wake up the next morning thinking that it's about to go down it's home and you see everybody around the tents you know soldiers everywhere just laid the fuck out gone and that was one angel that did that then the king of Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital of Nineveh and stayed there. One day while he was worshiping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramelech and Sherezer killed him with their swords. They then escaped to the land of Ararat and another son, Asardan, became the next king of Assyria. So this is some good history, man. 
All right. And, uh, you know, this this king, he was real proud. He was proud and arrogant. And he really thought that he was going to make a move on uh, on Jake, you know, only for his uh, plans to be thwarted off. And his, uh, his armies ended up getting defied instead. The Lord sent one angel down and he he he, <laughs> he put out 185,000 of them, took them completely out. So this is a very comforting um, story, you know, based on true history, which now they're, uh, the archaeologists are proving really happened. Okay. They found the site where, uh, you know, these soldiers, you know, uh, you know, had their encampment. Let me go here to Psalms 3. Yeah, this is uh, Psalms 3. And uh, one, and it says, and this is a morning prayer of trust in the Most High. It says, a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in the Most High power. Salah. But thou, O Yahweh, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and heard me out of this holy hill. Salah. I laid me down and slept, and I awake for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Yahweh, save me, O my power, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon all thy, thy people. Salah. And let me get this one in the apocrypha real, real quick. Go to the Maccabees. And it says, uh, this is 2nd uh, Maccabees 15. And I'm going to start at uh, 6. It says, so Nicanor, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with them. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven. And now to accept, it's like you expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets. And you know they had to have read this account about how the Lord sent the angel down to slew, slay 185,000 soldiers of um, the Assyrian army. And with and with though putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, and he made them more cheerful. All right. So this 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 word is, is it comforts us. Okay. And then the fact that you know they're discovering more. So we know that the scriptures is true, man. All right. So uh, you know, Lord willing, uh, this was edifying. And I'm going to give all the praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai, and to the next one, Shalom.